Welcome to Rediscovering China. I'm Johnny Johnson with a quick question for you. What would you say is the most popular beverage in the world? Well, with over 4,000 years of happy history going for it, I'd say it's just got to be tea, glorious tea. And for the next 30 minutes, we're going to find out just how glorious tea can be right here on Rediscovering China. So be there or be a square teapot. For many millennia, and from the earliest times of recorded history in China, tea has been regarded and revered as a special source of health-giving goodness and social pleasure bestowed on mankind by the generosity and love of Mother Earth. The whole process and preparation of tea and the art of boiling and steeping the brew is part of a ceremonial sharing of well-being, respect and honor between host and guests. As we cherish and savor the tea, we become united as brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of Mother Nature. In this special moment, joined and endowed by the fusion of the brew, we become children of the dragon. Our story begins over 5,000 years ago. According to legend, Emperor Shen Nung, a notably skilled scientist and scholar, ruled China's vast empire. His many far-sighted edicts included the requirement that all drinking water be boiled as a hygienic precaution. Servants began boiling water for the royal court to drink. By chance, the wind blew dried leaves from a nearby bush into the boiling water, and a brown substance was infused into the liquid. After tasting the brew, he declared it to be most refreshing.这呢是向大家介绍唐代的茶圣陆羽和他所写的茶经它是唐禧宗供奉佛祖的一套茶具但是我们认为这些水剧和饮食器具呢，是我们专用茶具的一个源头。In the 15th century, Chuangzhou was one of the biggest, busiest, and most important harbors in the Orient, equal to that of the port city of Alexandria in ancient Egypt. Chuangzhou was a main export port for the merchant fleets of China's Maritime Silk Road. The power of the Maritime Silk Road lay in the increased speed and economy achieved by transporting merchandise by ship. Then in 1405 to 1433, famed Chinese Admiral Zhang He made the first of seven historic trading voyages, navigating his giant commercial fleets to Southeast Asia, Africa, Arabia, and India. But long, long before sailing ships, horses and camels dominated the slow and perilous Silk Road. Well, this desolate place in the Gobi Desert is called Yumen Gwen. Now, 2,000 years ago, there was a military garrison here. It was a bustling outpost of Chinese Han Dynasty 
culture and commerce on the Silk Road. It was also a point of no return for those slow plodding treasure laden camel caravans heading west on the Silk Road through India, Persia, Syria with their cargoes of made in China luxury goods destined for the bazaars of the Middle East, Constantinople, and even on to the Roman Empire. And on those long and dangerous journeys, the merchants and traders also carried with them, besides their precious silk cargoes, tons and tons of the world's most favorite beverage, tea, glorious tea both to sell and to drink because the Silk Road is in fact the tea and Silk Road of ancient China. Well, I find this absolutely, fantastically amazing that during the Han Dynasty, the workers actually built the Great Wall of China right across the Gobi Desert. And I'll tell you, if you come to the Gobi Desert, you see the desolation, you feel the heat, you just can't believe the work that was done. Now, why did they build the Great Wall? Well, one of the main reasons was to protect the wealth that flowed into China by way of the Silk and Tea Road. And over the years, of course, 2,000 years, Mother Nature has not been too kind to the Great Wall. In fact, the storms and sandstorms that have been blowing have blown most of the wall away, except for this one section, which is maintained as a historic site and tribute to the Silk and Tea Road of China. Tea has always been a vital part of China's economy. Back in the good old days of the Great Wall, it was actually used as money. Black tea was formed into bricks and carried by traders as the caravans ventured west. At that time, a brick of black tea was as precious as gold and as important an international currency as the US dollar is today. This tranquil scene of beautiful sand dunes can be quite deceiving. Any time now, drifting sands and blowing sandstorms from the Gobi and Taklamakan deserts can bury a stalled car or stranded traveler in less than 30 minutes. That's why this has been called the land of death for as long as anyone can remember. Fact, eight out of 10 travelers who attempt to cross the desert on foot die. In summertime, like today, temperatures climb into the mid 50 degrees Celsius range. In winter, the bone-chilling, biting cold wind plunges temperatures down to lows of minus 20. But what I discovered is actually the Silk Road was kind of like a, a two-way street. In 1271 AD, merchant adventurers like the young 17-year-old Marco Polo and his father and uncle finally made their way to China from Venice. I must say, the thrill for me of walking on the historic Silk and Tea Road is incredible. This place is Crescent Moon Oasis, the most important oasis on the Silk Road and looking very much today as it did 700 years ago when Marco Polo enjoyed his first cup of tea here in China. At the height of the Silk Road, hundreds of thousands of tons of tea went west from here. Talking to Lucy here, she told me that the average camel caravan consisted of about 30 camels. They covered 20 kilometers a day, and in good weather, they could, uh, they could cover the dis distance across the Gobi Desert in just five weeks, as long as they weren't hit by a sandstorm.
Over a thousand kilometers south of the haunting splendor of the Gobi Desert lies the lovely lakeside city of Hangzhou. It's world famous for Longjing Dragonwell Tea and was voted by my friend Marco Polo as the most beautiful city he'd ever seen. Longjing. That sign welcomes us to the famous Longjing or Dragon Well Village, known all over China by that name because of its wonderful and delicious green tea. The arch, the gate, is over 1,200 years old. Many, many famous people have passed through here, and we are going to be a few more. Let's go. Caressed in the nurturing embrace of Mother Nature's green and fertile arms, Longjing Village lies like a jewel in the picturesque valley below us. This is home as it has been for more than a thousand years to China's green gold, Longjing Dragonwell Tea. This Longjing Village, it's because 在我们这个地方，这个村的位置呢，它的地理环境呢，它跟其他地方呢，如果我们到周围去看一下，它是四山为景。我们龙井的村就在井底，你到了山上去看的话，整个山就是围住了这个村。那一山为景而得名，叫龙井。这个井呢，是南宋的时候，我们的这个当时杭州知知府啊。呃，这个苏东坡任杭州知府的时候呢，他经常到这里来喝茶，呃，饮酒喝茶，而且跟这里的砭柴和尚结了至交。他在这里喝了茶呢，每次到来了以后呢，都认为这里的茶好，水好。他当时是挥动墨宝，就把这个地方作为老龙井的字。现在刻在岩石上的这三个字，就是老龙井当时的苏东坡留下的墨宝。当时我们那个清朝的乾隆皇帝啊，六次下江呢，他四次到了这个地方，他看到这个地方呢，山清水秀啊，嗯、呃，对这个地方的这个茶树，嗯、呃，看得很好。我们的主人呢，就把这个上好的茶叶拿出来给他喝，他喝了这个茶以后呢，他爱不释手。然后呢，在这个时候呢，京城来了电，要他回家，嗯、呃，说他太后生病了。他回到家以后呢，太后当时问他。他说：“你到江南去拿来了什么东西？什么宝贝？”他把这个好的茶叶呢，夹在这个本子里，拿出来给太后看。当时这个茶叶拿来以后呢，拿出来一看，这个茶叶经过他的书本夹了以后呢，这个茶叶经刚烧了，刚烧了也就扁了。嗯，这个茶叶冲泡给太后吃的时候呢，太后感到这个茶叶呢，哎，一喝的话呢，眼睛要亮了，这个精神也好了。在这个时候呢，太后说：“以后把这个茶叶每年都给我们拿来给我们吃。”这个从这以后呢，乾隆皇帝呢，到每次到江南去呢，到这个地方就要搞一点好茶，而且指定在这个地方的茶叶每年作为他的贡品。那我们在这个地方一划呢，是十八棵茶树。Everyone. Here in Longjing Village, literally has a hand in green tea growing and production. Every family has its own small tea plantation, and every home its own special tea processing room and small tea boutique. For generations, tea has connected people with nature. It's as though they live here in perfect harmony with nature. Tea is their life. Consistently high demand for this superb quality green tea in China, Asia, and now around the world has brought prosperity and a high standard of living to all Dragonwell tea-growing families in Longjing.
But there's much more to China's green tea story and its potent health qualities as I discovered driving the 200 kilometers from Hangzhou into the steep mountains of Wuyi. The incredible value of annual green tea production from the mountainside terraced plantations is around 25 million US dollars a year. That's an impressive 30% of China's total tea output. I've just climbed about 700 meters to get here, and I can tell you, it was worth it. I'm actually standing in the center of China's premium green tea growing country. About two hours from Jinhua, a small town in southeast China, famous for its teas and delicious hams. Here, the altitude, the climate, and the chemical-free environment produce outstanding conditions for organic green tea. Tea with a gentle fragrance and a beautiful green color. Now, I never realized until I arrived here in the mountains of Wuyi and chatted to the local growers that the tea plant is a close relative of the privet hedge bush found in many western gardens. It has smooth, shiny green leaves and is one of those anomalies of the plant world, a deciduous, leaf-bearing evergreen called Camellia sinensis. <laughs> Zai 那个时候就是进行茶交易的这个行业。当初的茶呢，从这个水路，呃，运往全国各地。Every day from spring through summer, as the late afternoon sun begins to dip towards the west, tea pickers gather high up on the mountain sides to have their daily harvest of ripened leaves weighed and paid for by factory buyers. The freshly picked leaves are immediately sent down to the factories, just like this one, scattered in the valleys below the plantations. Right away, as day turns to night, the careful work of processing the fresh leaves into packaged tea begins and is rigorously supervised and timed at every stage of the operation. There's an old Chinese saying that goes like this. In springtime, it's the most beautiful time of the year because that's the time to pick the new buds of tea. Well, 800 meters up here on the side of this beautiful tea plantation, a lovely mountain lake in the background, tea pickers working, I know just what they mean. Rain or shine, each of these skilled women tea harvesters picks about 600 grams of leafy buds daily. Have you ever wondered what Southeast China looks like? Well, you're looking at it right now. The reason I've come to Fujian province, north of Hong Kong and just across the water from Taiwan, is to find out what makes world-famous oolong and wulong teas so special. I've already discovered that oolong means black dragon or black snake in Chinese. And according to legend, a tea plantation owner was scared away from his drying leaves one day by the appearance of a black snake. When he came back a couple of days later, he found that the leaves drying in the sun had started to ferment, creating, creating a delightful brew. Now, another story, and the one I like best, is that the tea is called oolong because the leaves are like baby black dragons that wake up 
when you pour hot water on them. Cheers. Oolong tea has been grown in the mountains around this picture postcard town of Anxi for over a thousand years. These exceptional teas have been a specialty of China since the Song Dynasty. What makes them so highly prized is that they are semi-fermented and partially oxidized teas. For me, the best way to describe oolong tea is to say it falls halfway between green tea and black tea. But because of a partial fermentation process, drinking the tea produces a wonderful zing-like taste sensation that shakes up and delights the taste buds. Yan 又是中了铁锅里面,所以就跟他并名为铁观音. And this is where it all began for this zestfully stimulating brew. Ancient calligraphy inscribed here on the rock face high in the craggy mountains bear witness to the discovery of Iron Goddess of Mercy tea. 相传在当地有一个书生叫王世浪, 在一七三六年呢，跟几个朋友到这个霍山上游玩的时候，发现有一株这个奇特的茶树，所以他就移植在这个花圃里面种植。种植完以后制成了这个茶叶呢，品质确实跟其他茶叶不一样。所以在一七
and matchless quality of its teas, inspiring this romance in page after page of poetic prose, praising nature's bountiful goodness and their own special beloved brews. Well, this is just the end of the beginning of our story, because the tea culture covers the whole of China. It's a pretty big story for a very big country. Next time, we'll be checking out some very unusual and interesting tea houses in some quite offbeat locations, so I do hope you can grab a cup and join me then. Till then, I'm Johnny Johnson with a suggestion. How about you go put the kettle on and we'll all have a nice cup of tea because I can tell you right here in the Gobi Desert right now I could sure do with one. Till then, so long, take care, Zai Jen.